And the other way that we've seen this is so useful is that you're able to do all these calculations. Really, if you understand the ratio unit, you can do it without using any formulas. Um, remember that earlier, remember that earlier we came up with a kind of formula that relates the total spent on apples, the price of apples, and the quantity of apples. Here's a formula that you could use, um, and we saw that it's really not necessary to use this formula if you understand what a price is. Now, what have we been trying to do in the last few examples? Well, I've been telling you the total spent and asking you what Q is. I've been telling you how much was spent on apples, how many dollars were spent on apples, and asking you to figure out what the total quantity bought was. Now, how would you do that uh, using this equation? How could you figure out what Q is from this equation? Well, you could solve this equation for Q. Try using algebra to solve this equation for Q. Well, we have to get the Q by itself, so we would divide both sides by the price and then the price would cancel, and we end up with the quantity equals the total spent on apples divided by the price. So this is the official formula for figuring out the quantity of apples that you bought. It would be the total spent divided by the price. You could have used this formula to solve all the problems that we just did. For example, going back to an earlier example, we were asking if someone spends $15 on apples, how many apples did they buy? Well, you could just plug into this formula here. The total spent here is $15. And the price of the apples is $3. So we end up with 15 divided by 3, which is 5 apples. But the good news is, this formula is really completely unnecessary. We just saw that a second ago. We just did a whole bunch of problems where I told you how much was being spent on the apples, and you figured out how many apples were bought, and you didn't use any formulas at all. Again, you didn't have to go look up in a textbook that total spent equals price times quantity, and then solve that for quantity to solve those problems earlier. You could just use your kind of common sense and unit analysis, based on our understanding now of what this ratio unit means. One apple costs $3. So if I tell you uh, the total number of dollars spent, it's easy to figure out how many apples were bought. So the lesson that I'm trying to give here again is that, um, that many of the formulas that students spend a long time memorizing and looking up in physics and chemistry aren't really necessary if you understand the role of the um, ratio of units, the unit ratio. If you understand that the formula involves a um, ratio unit, you can solve problems without actually looking up that formula. Again, we already talked about this formula that you would see in the second semester of physics. The electric potential energy equals the electric potential times the charge. For example, suppose you were doing a physics problem where you were given u and v, and you were asked to find q. Well, the way a lot of people would do that is that they would look this formula up in their textbook. And then when they found the formula, they would solve it for q, and they would get q equals u divided by v. Uh, and then they would plug in u and v, and they could figure out what q is. Uh, and the point I'm making is that it turns out it's really completely unnecessary to look this formula up in the textbook or to have it memorized because we're going to see that V is a ratio unit. And if you really understand what it means for V to be a ratio unit, you can solve this problem just by manipulating the units or really just by using common sense without having to look up any formulas. 
just like you can solve questions about money and apples without having to look up any specific formulas. Okay, uh, so now we've completed our discussion of prices. Now remember, why were we talking about prices? Well, we're talking about prices because prices are a ratio unit that most people have a good intuition for. So I wanted to use that as an example that will help us to understand all the other ratio units in chemistry um, and in physics. So obviously when you're doing chemistry and physics, you're not dealing with prices, but you're dealing with other ratio units that can be interpreted in uh, quite the same way. So our goal here is again, remember that when you're working with prices, um, you mainly, when you're doing, working with prices, you can mainly solve problems just using your intuition. Um, you don't actually have to um, look up any formulas uh, and use formulas to solve the problems. We want to get to the point where you can do the same thing with a lot of physics and chemistry concepts. When you're working with physics and chemistry unit ratios, it's oftentimes totally unnecessary to work with the formulas. If you understand what the unit ratio means, you shouldn't need the formula to solve the problem. What we want to do now then is start surveying some of the ratio units that you can see in chemistry and physics and we'll see how the ideas that we've been developing here can help you with those ratio units.